Assalamualaikum and good day. Hi to all. In this video, we are going to look at solidification of pure metal and alloy. What is mean by pure metal is when we have only one element in that metal. For example, I use copper. The whole metal will be made of copper only. And then when we talk about alloys, it means the combination of several metal. For example, when I use copper and nickel, it will form an alloy. One of the main difference for pure metal and alloy is on their cooling curve. I will show the difference in the slide later. Before we begin, we need to know a little bit about these terminologies. The first terminology is solvent. It means in an alloy, the element or compound present in greater amount. The second one you need to know, what is solute? In an alloy, the element or compound present in less amount. The third one will be solution. Solution is when two components combine to form a single phase. For example, over here, we have water and sugar. Water in the greater amount, we call it as solvent. And then sugar in lesser amount, we call it as solute. When we combine it together or we put the sugar into the water, it will form syrup. Syrup is one of example of solution. The component combined from water and sugar to form a single phase syrup. So the water will be solvent, the sugar as the solute, and the syrup is the solution. For this example, the syrup solution is happen after we stir the sugar and water together. In this case, the stirring process is needed to make sure the sugar dissolve in the water. The fourth one is solubility. It means degree to which the two components mix. And then we have solubility limits. It is the maximum concentration of a solute that may be added without forming a new phase. Before this, I give you example on water plus sugar and then the solution that we'll get is syrup. If we keep on adding sugar, the mixture will produce syrup plus sugar. It means that the water and sugar already exceed its solubility limits. So it forms two phases. The first phase is syrup and the second phase that we can see is sugar. And then we need to know the term components. It means the elements or compounds which are mixed initially. The seventh terminology that we need to know, phases. It is the physically and chemically distinct material region that result. We take a look at this example. In this figure, we have two components. The first component that we have is aluminium. And the second one is copper as stated here. Then we have two phases as we can see. The lighter one and the darker one. We have alpha phase for the darker one. And then beta phase the lighter one. Before this I told you guys for the solution. It is when two components combine and form a single phase. But sometimes they also can remain separate. For example, when we mix together alcohol and water, it will make a single phase solution and we call it as completely soluble. And then when we have hot water and chocolate powder, the powder is mixed soluble in water but at limited extent. For example, when we keep on adding chocolate powder into the hot water, the powder will not be dissolved well at certain point. When we keep on adding the chocolate powder after that point, the chocolate powder will separate or not mix in the hot water. The third example, when we have oil and vinegar, we mix them together, they will only temporarily mix when we let them for a while they will separate and form a layer of oil and vinegar. This is what we call insoluble. 
these three examples are to show you what it is meant by single phase solution and also separate solution. In all these three cases, there are in liquid solution. In next slide, we will look at why we are going to combine the pure metal to make an alloy. And then we are also going to learn a solution in the solid state, or we also call it as solid solution. Why we are combining some metal components to make it alloy? It is because most important combine to form alloy in order to impart special characteristic. An alloy is a combination of two or more elements at least one of which is metal. The addition of impurity atom to a metal will result in the formation of a solid solution. A solid solution is a solid state solution. It is the solution is in its solid state of one or more solute in a solvent. For example, over here we have steel and cast iron bronze and brass, aluminum alloy, nickel-based alloy, magnesium-based alloy, and titanium alloy. Let's see the characteristic of solid solution. It is formed when solute atoms are added to the host material. So in this case, the host material is a solvent, and then we add it with solute atom. For example, we take copper as a host material, and nickel as the solid atom. We adding a little bit of nickel by percentage into the copper. The crystal structure is maintained. For example, for copper, we have FCC crystal structure. The alloy will maintain with FCC crystal structure. No new structure form and compositionally homogeneous. Mainly, we have two types of solid solution. The first one is substitutional solid solution and second one is interstitial solid solution. For substitutional solid solution, the added atom or the solute atom will get into the lattice structure. For interstitial solid solution, the impurities or the solute atom will be in between the lattice structure. For substitutional solid solution, our host atom and impurities must follow Hume rotary rules. There are four rules. The first one, atomic radius must be less than or about plus minus 50% difference in atomic radii. It means that the atomic radius must be almost the same in atomic radius. The second rule is for crystal structure, they must have same crystal structure. In the previous case, we used copper nickel. Both copper nickel is FCC crystal structure. The third rule is electronegativity. They must have similar electronegativity or only small difference and then for the fourth rule the valence electron they must have similar valence electron only if the host atom and impurity atom following all these four rules it will have substitutional solid solution for example we take the green one as copper or a solvent and then the blue one as the nickel, we can keep on adding nickel into the copper and the nickel will replace the copper. In this case, we can keep on adding more and more nickel and the percentage of copper will be lesser and lesser and they have no solubility limits. You can pause and read the example one over here for copper nickel system on substitutional solid solution. You can also check other example given in your note. Now we take a look for interstitial solid solution. We have interstitial solid solution when impurity atom fill the void in the solvent atom lattice. It's shown here when the solute get into the void. Atomic diameter of an interstitial impurity must be smaller 
than host atom. Normal maximum allowable concentration of interstitial impurity atom is low. Only less than 10% of impurity can fill in the void of the host atom. It means that for this case, the solubility limit is less than 10% impurities. The solubility limit is changed depending on the temperature. For example, over here we have composition of sugar in the pure water. At 20 degrees Celsius, the solubility limit of sugar in the water is around 65% of sugar. But at 100 degrees Celsius, the solubility limit can get up to 88% of sugar. That's all for this video. I will see you again in the next video and we are going to study on solidification and cooling curve of pure metal and alloys. Thank you and have a nice day.